TV and Roku. Just download Changing a Generation streaming channel on your device. If you're a first-time visitor, type FTV in the comment section. We thank you for sharing. Our theme for 2024 is It's Go Time, taking I Am's message everywhere. In need of prayer? The Changing Generation Active Prayer and Donation Line during virtual services, 1-877-211-0342. Sundays, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and Tuesdays, 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Press option 1 for prayer or option 2 for donations. Changing a Generation Step Call. Join us every Tuesday at 7 a.m. as we step shifting toward everybody praying. The dial-in number is 774-460-4400. Need a midweek boost? Join us in person or virtually for Changing a Generation's Tuesday Night Word Explosion at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Do this in remembrance of Him. Join us every second Sunday for our Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, and Baptism during our 11 a.m. service. The highlights for the month of March are Palm Sunday on the 24th during our 11 a.m. service, Holy Symposium on Tuesday the 26th during our 7.30 p.m. service, special guest, Bishop-elect Victor DeMond Tate, First Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia, closing the month with Resurrection Sunday on the 31st during our 11 a.m. service. We're celebrating. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Changing Generation Next Generation Youth Ministry Service, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. A space to grow, develop, and learn the principles of Jesus Christ in an age-appropriate environment. Bring your youth out to get involved. Changing Generation Think Out of the Box Sunday School General Sessions for all ages takes place each Sunday at 10 a.m. to stay informed of the growth and launch Bridge to Discipleship, Lead Step, School of Prayer, Prophecy, and Deliverance, and the Prophetic School of Ministry are also available via Zoom. Email christianeducation at cagmin.org to register or to get more information on these awesome programs. Staying connected to the community, Changing Generation Food Pantry is open every Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m at 4191B Snapfinger Woods Drive. Same parking lot as the church. Please make sure your trunk or back seat is available for donation placement. Attention members, to report a death, sick, or confined member of the ministry, or if in need of counseling, please call corporate at 404-284-8865. Tuesday through Thursday, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Full Gospel Baptist Church International Conference, July 9th through 11th in New Orleans. See the travel info on the screens. The trip departs July 8th for the conference. Registration is not included. Register at fullgospelconference.org. For more information, see Pastor Sheila Griffin or Minister Tanya Clifton in the lobby. Bishop-elect T. Delbert Robinson will be consecrated as a bishop during this year's conference, and we want to show up in big numbers to celebrate his elevation. There's also a special celebration luncheon being planned for greater and changing members in attendance on July 12th at Greater St. Stephen. Luncheon tickets are $75 each. March is Women's History Month celebrating the contributions women have made to the United States and recognize specific achievements women have made over the course of American history in a variety of areas. Also note that March is National Nutrition Awareness Month. Save the date at 70, it's my runway. Celebrate on a yacht with Pastor D for her 70th birthday. June 6th and 7th in Miami, Florida. Scan that QR code on the screen for details. We are set to celebrate the elevation of our pastor, Bishop-elect T. Delbert Robinson. To secure your ticket for the Elevation Celebration on Friday, July 12th, 
in New Orleans at Greater St. Stephen, see a representative in the lobby. Register at fullgospelconference.org to join us in New Orleans July 9th through 11th. Please visit our website at cagnow.org for links to the following ministries platforms. Pastoral care for all counseling, bereavement, sick, shut-in needs. Men of vision. Young adults. And much more. As we prepare for worship, we want to remind you of all the ways you can donate and support Changing a Generation. To make a donation by mobile giving, message CAG to 54244. Givelify. Click and search for Changing a Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church, Decatur, Georgia. Cash App, dollar sign CAG now. Use our secured website. CAGnow.org or mail to Changing a Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church, Post Office Box 360368, Decatur, Georgia 30036. To stay connected for all updates, you can text CAGnow to 22828 to sign up for eBlast or visit CAGnow.org.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Can we celebrate Jesus? Good evening, Changing a Generation in-house, and good evening to our CAG streaming family. Welcome to our holy symposium, The Journey to the Cross. It is an evening of praise, an evening of worship, and the preach word. You are about to be blessed real good. Our scripture reading this evening is found in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5 in IV. And it reads as this, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, we just thank you so much for this evening, oh God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, oh God, for peace for life, for favor, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for the journey that brought us our reconciliation with you. Father, in the name of your son, Christ Jesus, thank you, oh God, for your gift of love, for your sacrifice of love, for no greater love is there than a man lay down his life for his friends. Lord, we thank you for the leaders of this house, the angels of this house, our senior pastor, Bishop-elect Dr. T. Delbert Robinson and First Lady, Elder Jasmine Morton Robinson, our overseers, Bishop Morton and Pastor D. God bless them immensely, oh God. And Father, we invite you right now. Make your presence known here, oh God. Manifest, oh God. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. And it's in the mighty matchless name of your Son, Christ Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen.
the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, praise. I greet you in divine love. My summer tonight is to extrapolate a word for us from our meditation scripture, which comes from John chapter 12, verse 27. Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause I came unto this hour. Praying now. Speak, Holy Spirit. We are listening. Our focus topic is journey to the cross. For a subtopic, I said Jesus' mission was the cross. Why? Because a journey is defined as something suggested traveling from one place to another. But a mission is defined as a specific task with which a personal group is charged or a pre-established or often self-imposed post objective and purpose. The D clause of the chapter makes it more clear. But for this cause I came to this hour. Everyone within the sound of my voice, if you haven't heard about Jesus, this man called Jesus, you need to know about him. We know that his journey began in the gospel according to, to Luke. He said that he was conceived in, by a virgin, by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was called Jesus because he came to forgive the sins of his people. In, in Matthew chapter 1, he said, Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of, of the Lord by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall be with the child, and bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. We're all familiar with Luke chapter 2, when the angels met the shepherds in the field, and, he said, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which all people with all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ our Lord. Jesus was born to die in order that the world might be saved. I believe Jesus' mission started at his conception and his ministry started when he became of age. Just like Jesus spoke to Jeremiah in 1 and 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Would not this same word be applicable to the man called Jesus? In the same chapter, when he was 12 years old, he was separated from his family. They found him in the temple having dialogue with the doctors. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Know ye not that I must be about my father's business? Jumping quickly to the text, we find, we find Jesus having a dialogue with Andrew and Phillips. Jesus has arrived at the pinnacle moment of his mission. He said in 23, he said, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Hour in this particular passage means a time of a particular happening or the time for a given activity. In the text, we find Jesus has compared his death to a grain of wheat falling to the ground and dying, but bearing much fruit. In verse 24, he then applies this law to mankind. Only when we give up our self-life and die can we really live. I would like to believe that this conversation shifted between Philip and Andrew in our text to a conversation with Jesus would have it with himself. Why you would say that, Pastor? Because if you go to Colossians 2 and 9, for in this, in, for in this, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. Jesus was the, is the third person in the triunness of God. It signifies the divine nature, completeness found in him. Uh, upon my research, I came up with this word they call hypostatic union. What is a hypostatic union, Pastor? It's two natures, one person. Jesus possesses two distinct natures, divine and human. Each nature is full and complete, making him both fully God and fully man. Despite this duality, his nature remains distinct and separate. He is one person whom these two natures are united but not combined. In order to support my observation, I would like you to refer to my, my evidence found in the same chapter. Who provided a response to this conversation? In verse 12, he said, Father, glorify thy name. Then, then came their voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. I would like to leave you these four observations that I found in the text. Point number one, he makes a statement from his human nature, but his divine nature resolved. Now my soul is troubled. He makes a rhetor he asks a rhetorical question, his human nature that only his divine nature can answer. And what shall I say? He makes a petition from his human nature that only his divine nature can fulfill. Father, save me from this hour. He makes an affirmation from his human nature that is only his divine nature can confirm. For this came I unto this hour. I'm not going to close because the task is not finished. I'm just going to take my seat and I pray you've been blessed. 
Hallelujah! 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 Come on, if you're glad about the sacrifice, come on, somebody give him glory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Well, I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was staying on Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind And it was staying on the wall Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind And it was staying on Jesus Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah Thank you, might as well come on and clap your hands And give God glory tonight if you're glad about the sacrifice If you really woke up this morning with your mind on 
you praise. I know it was the blood for me. <laughs> Anybody know it? Anybody know it? Hallelujah. The blood that she Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. He shed for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength. Anybody know something about the blood tonight?
you can feel the presence of the living God in this place. In your name, Jesus. Do you feel his power moving? Do you feel his presence Lord, in this in place? Your name, Jesus. Come on and just give him praise right thank where you, you are. Oh, God, with your hands, welcome. with your mouth. Tell him thank you place. for his holy sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor and thank glory. You, Everyone clap your hands thank and bless you, the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord, our God. My goodness. Well, it's good to be here on Holy Tuesday, Amen. Holy Symposium. Amen. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we rejoice and find ways to be glad about it. I am so grateful to God tonight to be in the house. We are so thankful to God for the flow that has taken place. Can we give God praise for Sister Monica and Sounds of Change? Ooh, hallelujah. My goodness. We are so grateful to God, and I'm telling you, the stage has been set. Pastor Ernest Turner going forth tonight. Amen, amen. What a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing. Just the College of Elders leading this year. The College of Elders so has special. done such Come a on, marvelous job overseer where we thank God for you. Come on and clap your amen. hands for them. And while you're clapping, let's just give honor. Call the roll tonight. Our overseers are in the house. Amen. Bishop and Pastor D. Woo, 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 woo. We're grateful yes, to yes, God yes. for our overseers. We Amen. love and esteem you all tonight. We are grateful to God. While you're clapping, our first lady, can we thank God for her tonight? Bless you. Good evening, changing. Oh, y'all fired up tonight. I love our it. Our speaker is in the house. Yes, Bishop, Bishop elect. elect. Victor Tate. We'll talk more about him. And then can we give God praise really quickly for our virtual audience? So many are tapped in, tapped in and tuned in tonight. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, YouTube. And really quickly, you only got five seconds to do it. Look at your neighbor. Show them all your teeth and tell them I'm just glad to be sitting in the house of the Lord. Some of y'all ain't smiling at nobody. I'm looking at you. Smile Come on, smile at them and then clap your hands because <laughs> what a sacrifice. Many drove through the rain to be in the house and we are so grateful to God for that tonight. Amen. People of God will help me honor the set man of this house, our senior pastor, Bishop Bless you. Elect, come on, T. Delvin Robinson. Bless you. That's our pastor. Yes, Bless yes, you. yes, man of God. We honor you, you on tonight. It is certainly good to be in the house of the Lord on a holy Tuesday. Will you give Jesus a praise? Come on, one more time. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We just have a few announcements for your hearing on tonight because we know that we have a treat in store for us. We want you to join us on Resurrection Sunday. Come on, believers. Praise God. We are celebrating that Jesus Christ lives on Sunday, March 31st at 11 a.m. with our overseers. I promise you it's going to be a time in the Lord. We expect visitors to share with us i tell you it's going to be a blessing and we're going to put on our good faces amen we're going to be kind and loving because people are coming to worship the name of the lord of course you've been hearing all month long uh and she's in the building tonight and she's turning 70 and it's her runway will you celebrate overseer she's turning 70 she says it's my one way and she wants you all of y'all everybody to celebrate on a yacht with her uh for her 70th birthday june 6th june 7th in miami florida as only she can if you're interested you can scan the qr code on the screen overseer morton also leads up our pace ministry she does she does and they have an announcement what's that political advancement and community, and community empowerment, empowerment. That's that's pace that's pace it's new to changing a generation 2024 it's go time and guess where else pace is going you're going to the polls yes that's right as believers of course we know we are to be good citizens the bible tells us to do so and the drawing that's going to take place here at cag we've been talking about it is happening on resurrection sunday on march 31st it's for everyone who signs up to vote a thousand dollars will be distributed among 16 persons so if you're registering you can be in that number you must be present with your card to win to win so let's keep up the pace make sure we do our part to bring those who are not registered voters to the house of the lord to do that and of course changing women make some noise if you're in the building 
That's right, they are here. I told you on Sunday, Saturday, April 13th is our next event. It's happening 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's a Y Wellness Day, a whole healed and yielded woman wellness day. We want you to be whole, be healed, be yielded as you invest. It's an investment in a day focused on your well-being in every year. The Lord gave me the theme, pretty is as pretty lives, because you're only as beautiful as how well you take care of yourselves. Amen. So we want to give you some tools. We want to help you out a little bit and give you some tools to build up, to strengthen your shell, your soul, and your spirit. Light snacks and lunch will be served throughout the day. There's a QR code on the screen, or if you don't know how to do QR codes, you can visit our website. And the cost is only $10, and you can sign up there. Almost lastly, of course, we're excited as a ministry that we do uh, serve the community every Thursday at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. right here in our parking lot. Our food pantry is open. And then finally, of course, we are super excited with tiptoe anticipation as we celebrate. We're set to celebrate the elevation of our pastor, the bishop-elect, T.W. Robinson. Yes, we are excited excited about it and we want to remind you I know that tickets they are almost gone so if you're in the building tonight I admonish you to go and secure your ticket for this celebration it's happening Friday July 12th in New Orleans at Greater St. Stephen you can see prophetess Sophia Corker she's on the front row there but she'll be in the lobby with her team so you can purchase do not purchase without stopping by the table because just because you pay there may not be any more tickets left you have to do two things amen Amen. Amen. Come on and give God praise for everything that's taking place. So good to see Pastor Robert Maxwell yes, in the house to tonight. God bless you, cousin. Yes. We thank God for you. As we prepare to worship God in our giving tonight, what a blessing it is to be able to give unto the Lord. Our deacons are moving about the room. If you need an envelope for your giving, lift your hand up high enough, keep it up long enough. You will be served quick enough. We certainly thank God for each and every single one of you giving tonight even those that are giving online you can do the following whether it's in your house or in this house no matter where you are you can text CAG hop in to 54244 yes you can you can also search for Givelify use that app and search for changing a generation Atlanta you can give via cash app dollar sign CAG now if you give this way we ask you to do two things include your full name and category in the memo. You can also give via our secure website at www.cagnow.org and then you can mail in your seeds to P.O. Box 360 368 Decatur, Georgia 30036. Every tither tonight is my time. It's my turn. Will you stand right where you are? Want to see who you are? Any tithers tonight? Will we give God praise for you? Amen. Amen. We God certainly thank God for you. As we are looking to the Lord in prayer we pray the blessing over our tithers that are standing father we give you praise open now the window of heaven pour out favor influence concepts and opportunities and for these things rebuking the devourer for our sake we thank you for it now by the strong name of Jesus we pray Jesus. amen and thank God amen everyone who's giving tonight whether you're tithing sowing an offering tonight will you repeat after me Lord it's not a debt Lord, it's not a debt. It's a seed. It's a seed. I'm sowing it. I'm sowing I it. I believe. I believe. You can grow it. You can grow because it. Because of this seed. Because of this seed. The quality of my life. The quality of my it life. It will be made better. It will be made better. Come on, better. shout out. I don't need another chance. I don't need another to chance. To mess up doing the same thing. Amen. But this yes. seed right here is my better chance. Hallelujah. Amen. Deacons, you might serve the people of God with joy at this time. Let us give in-house and in the virtual space. Amen.
Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands. We are ready to receive the word of God tonight. My brother is here, Bishop Elect Victor DeMonte, Senior Pastor of the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church right here in Atlanta, Georgia. And when I say my brother, he is my Episcopal brother. And we give God praise. After our music ministry has come, Elder Derek Starks is going to come and present our musical guest. The next voice you will hear after that will be Bishop Elect. Praise, praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. We are honored to be here tonight to celebrate with you. And tonight our, our guest is really not a guest. He's a son of this house. Yeah. Elder Eugene Brown is coming with the choir at this time. Come on, let's receive him. Let's give him a welcome. Come on. What's up, family? I love you, Bishop. I love you, Bishop Elect. Elder Jasmine. Bishop elect Kate, all of the saints of the Most High. I'm just glad to be here. I haven't been in this building since we left back in the early 2000s. Um, but I'm so glad to be here, glad to be a son, glad to have served in this house for seven years, whether y'all like it or not. I'm a son of this house. My wife is here with me. Latanya Ward Brown is with me tonight, and so we're grateful for her. There's a real simple praise in this moment in the service as we prepare our hearts for worship and to receive the word of the Lord. Can you just begin to lift up your voices to the Lord now? Begin to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. His name is Jesus. And there's no God like our God. I'm ready. We bless the name of Jesus. He's the Lamb of God. There's none like him. He's the, he's the indisputable champion of the world. And we bless him. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we bless him. We give him thanks. We glorify your name. Yeah. You are worthy of my prayer. Lord, your word, the of my praise, the ways you made for me, Woo! and the doors you opened for me. You are worthy of. witnesses here tonight. Come on, if you know our God is worthy, can you begin to lift up your voice like the trumpet that it is? Come on, choirs, let's sing it together. You are worthy. You are worthy. Let's sing it together.
my voice. This is your part. Jesus. Come on, I know I've got some sopranos out there singing. There's nobody like you. Come on, soprano. I want you to do this without the sopranos. For keeping me. For healing me. For healing me. And for loving me. For loving me. Even when I was unlovely. Oh, Jesus. Come on, altos. There's no one like you. For keeping me. You got it, some altos? Come on, sing. For healing me. And for loving me. For loving me. Oh Jesus. oh Jesus and every tenor, every low voice there's no I want you to sing this like you. there's no one like you come on male and female there's no one like you uh -huh. oh, oh, oh Jesus yes, sir. there's no one like you there's no one like you come on with one voice come on there's no one like you. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. There's no one. There's no Everybody. one like you. Jesus. There's no one like you. For healing me. For loving me. Oh, Jesus. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. For keeping me. those hands together and give our God a great praise oh come on change and you can do better than that put those hands together and give God a praise that's due God's name has he been good to anybody in the building tonight come on somebody just wave your hand in the atmosphere come on did you know there's nobody like the Lord Jesus nobody like him so strong over Hallelujah. Can you just do me a favor? Look at your neighbor and tell a neighbor or oh, neighbor. You in the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. And I've got a feeling God's got a blessing with your name on it. If you believe it, come on and give God a praise with your neighbor. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of prayer one more time. Certainly we honor the presence of God's glory. 
and the glory of God's presence. Hallelujah, for surely we feel the anointing of God just flowing in this house. We honor the presence of our God tonight on this holy Tuesday. Amen. Giving God the praise for all God has done, all God is doing, and even in faith that God is not done blessing us yet. Can you help me give God praise for the awesome leadership of this great house? Help me thank God for my brother, Bishop Elect T. Delbert Robertson. Robinson, you can do better than that. Come on, let's give God a praise for him. Hallelujah, and we give God praise for Lady Jasmine, amen. Give God praise for this incredible woman of God. We go way back, that's my Spelman sister, amen. All the way back to New Life Days, Morehouse and Spelman, amen. 1994, five, six, way back, amen. Help me honor God for the founders and overseers on tonight, how we love them and give God praise. Amen. What legacy they represent for us in the person of Bishop Paula S. Morton and General Overseer Dr. Deborah Morton. 70 where? My God. Amen. Changing a generation. You in the house tonight. Amen. We give God praise for you. And then certainly as we go to the word of the Lord. Amen. I just want to take this opportunity to say thank God. Because my papa taught me it's a poor dog that won't wag his own tail. And there are a few people from the other side of I-20 down First Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Are you in the building tonight? So good to have you all here with us. Amen. Look at your neighbor, just Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. It's good to be here in the presence of the Lord. Grab your Bibles tonight. Amen. As we go to the word of the Lord, thank God for our ministry of helps. Amen. Those who are serving on tonight. Help me thank God. Amen. For Pastor Brenda Davis and others who are serving us on tonight. We give God praise for them. If you would grab your Bibles tonight, turn very quickly with me to the gospel according to Luke, beginning at verse chapter number seven, the gospel according to Luke beginning at chapter number seven amen uh, verse number 18 hallelujah i promise you i won't be before you long tonight but if you let me borrow a few hallelujahs and amen amen we can get to the house just a little quicker on tonight but i believe that is a word from the lord listen for the word of the lord then the disciples of john reported to him concerning all these things and John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? When the men had come to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, asking, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And that very same hour, Jesus cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Watch this. Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things you have seen and heard that the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them and blessed is he who is not offended because of me my brothers and sisters for just a few moments as the spirit shall guide tonight i just want to teach and preach from this subject go tell it go tell it go tell it go tell it god we thank you for this opportunity to break forth the bread of life we give you praise in advance oh god lord that this word will accomplish that which you have set it out to do have your way and we'll be so careful to give you the praise the honor and the glory it's in jesus name we call it count it done even now let every heart say amen as you go to your seat just shout my subject as loud as you can go tell it go tell it my brothers and sisters God's ways are not our ways 
seemingly God does a logical, even odd things in our presence. God adds by subtracting. God multiplies by dividing. God gives by taking. God puts you ahead by sometimes leaving you behind. God takes what is weak and conquers what is strong. God uses the powerless to overcome the powerful. The text says he uses foolish things to confound the wise. God says if you want to go up, keep your pride down. Humble yourself before the very hand of God and in due time somebody say due time God will exalt you Mrs. Michelle Obama said it this way when they go low we go but I heard somebody say oh no when they go low I go do I have a witness in the building? Somebody can just wave your hand if you can identify with the fact that there are times when God will work your last nerve. I wish I had some real people in the building because it would be so simple, Bishop Elect Robinson, if God could just hurry up and do what we need him to do. It would be so much better if God would just take the express route to my situation. If God would just move quickly, but God likes to take God's time. God is not really one for the elevator or even the escalator. God seems to like to take the steps. Uh, we live in Atlanta. There are times when you're standing in the need of something that only God can do you wish God would just cut across I 20? But there are some people in the building that know God will take 285. <laughs> this is important for us because God understands process. Somebody say process. Oh, I can't hear you tonight, changing. Somebody shout process. Our God is a God of process because when God gets ready to use you, God has to ensure that what God has in you, God is able to get a uh, withdrawal out of you because whether you know it or not, nobody here but some other places I've been, there are people who want big platforms but have little preparation want big blessings with little benevolence they want a big deliverance but they have little discipline they want a big anointing but little consecration big favor but little focus is there anybody in the building that can wave their hand and shout but when God gets ready he takes you through a process Oh my God. Uh, in our text tonight, contrary to popular belief, my brothers and sisters, you do know that as we consider the life and times of Jesus the Christ on this Holy Week, Holy Tuesday symposium, it is important for us to realize who the uh, messianic person of Jesus the Christ actually is. Oh, but you got to keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, during his time, Jesus was not the only messianic figure around. Uh, I, I, let me just stop. I, I know this may not be popular on Holy Tuesday, but can I just pause parenthetically right through here to remind somebody that Jesus was not the only one who lay claim on this notion of being the anointed one or the Messiah. Jesus was not the only one who had a flock of people following after him. That's the reason why you can't be impressed just because people got folk following after them. Don't be impressed because folk got a lot of followers. The question is, where you leading them? Y'all going to make me preach harder than I intended to tonight. Jesus was not the only one that uh, exposed messianic tendencies throughout the Judean region. There were others, Docetheus, Simon of Perea, Abu Isa, Bar Kokhba, Afranges the shepherd, Judas the Galilean, 
you all remember, remember Menachem, the son of Judas, the Galilean, the one they called the teacher of righteousness at Qumran. You remember Qumran. That's why they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Y'all stick with me. I promise you we'll dance in just a moment. Uh, Eleazar, the son of Denius, and then there was Cyrus the Great king of the Ashamenad empire who uh, would go around with musicians to do what other people could not do and so it came as I feel like preaching I really do it came as no surprise that when we consider the pericope of our text tonight uh, we find Jesus who is being accosted with an inquiry somebody say inquiry it was an inquiry it was an inquiry it was an inquiry and uh, brings me to point number one it's important that you understand what we're dealing with in the text because unlike today in that time there was no source documents for Jesus oh God today no, no source documents for Jesus there was no proof texting no J-E-D-P no Yahwist and Elohist and Deuteronomist and priestly sources. There was no chapter and verse. They couldn't say turn to Matthew chapter 5 verse number 7. There was no Old and New Testament. No major or minor prophets. There was no historical or prophetic books. There was no gospels or epistles. Look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor none of that existed. Uh, as a result of that there was just who in oral tradition people talking about a man named Jesus oh God I wish I had a few witnesses in the building somebody can wave your hand right now because before you came to know him for yourself all you could do was testify that you heard somebody that was talking about Jesus do I have a few people that can wave your hand I know you're saved sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost but you are not always where you are right now there was no text, there was no old and new, none of that existed and even when you consider the text of our time, even the ordering of the text is not quite what it is, can I teach just a moment, just a few minutes, I promise you, uh, my time is going but we're going to be right where we need to be because in our text we realize that although the gospels are ordered in such a way in our New Testament biblical canon the reality is the way we got it now is the, not the way that it was because the Matthew Mark Luke and John comes first in the Old Testament would make you assume that they were written first but the fact of the matter is the epistles were actually written before the Gospels and instead of the Gospels uh, uh, being informed by the epistles the epistles were actually informed by the Gospels somebody shout yes right through here and so in our text tonight, the Bible says uh, that John is in prison. John is locked up because John had a, had, had a problem uh, keeping things to himself. I wish I had a witness right through here. John, John, John had an issue with putting his nose in business that it didn't belong. And people don't mind you talking as long as your talk don't start messing with their money. I wish I had with, uh, time to teach it, but I ain't got time to do that tonight. But the Bible says in our text, John is in jail, Elder Marianne, and his disciples come to him and say, John, now, now I know there are some other messianic figures out here. I, I know there are some people with some followings around here. I know there are some people out here doing some stuff, but John, there's a joker on the scene right now named Jesus. And, and I'm telling you, John, we, we've heard some stuff being done, but this Jesus is doing some stuff that we ain't never seen. 
seen before. I wish I had a witness in the building. And John sitting in jail said, well, uh, here's what I want you to do. John gives them a lesson that all of us can use on tonight because John teaches them and teaches us how important it is instead of talking around people. Y'all gonna like this. John says, don't just talk around them. Here's what you gotta learn how to do. Instead of talking around people, learn the anointing that comes with going straight to people for yourself. John says, well, here's what I want you to do. Go to Jesus and ask him the question. Can I get 12 people in the building that'll wave your hand and shout I used to be that joker who would talk around people but now I done got grown enough so if I got something to ask you I'll come and ask you for my y'all ain't gonna help me preach in this place John said don't talk about him go to him and ask him for yourself hey man are you the one Bible says that they go to Jesus. I'm almost done. They go to Jesus and start having a direct conversation with him. The Bible says they go to him and say, hey, Mr. Jesus. Uh, Mr. Jesus, we've heard some of the things that you're doing. Oh, uh, Mr. Jesus, we heard that you're opening up blinded eyes oh Mr. Jesus there are people around the building that are talking about how you're taking natural elements and doing supernatural things oh Mr. Jesus we heard uh, that one day you were out preaching on the side of the sea and the bar we heard that uh, they got hungry cause you were a little long winded preacher Mr. Jesus and they didn't have the ability to go and find something to eat. Are y'all hearing me tonight? And, and, and they say, Mr. Jesus, uh, we just got one question. John sent us to you to ask, are you the one? And on this Holy Tuesday, I stopped by changing a generation for a few moments to ask you, do you know if he's the one? And can you look at your neighbor and say neighbor oh neighbor I know him I know him for myself and we just need to ask him are you the one Jesus begins to tell us watch this my second point and I'm going to get out of your way point number two Jesus begins to share with them the difference between revelation and manifestation can I teach you just for a moment Jesus helps us to understand that prophetic revelation is always the precursor to spiritual manifestation I wish I had somebody right through here in other in other words, uh, thanks to God, you got to be careful because you'll always miss manifestation if you mishandle revelation. I just said something there. I really did. I, let me say it again for the people that you will always miss manifestation if you mishandle revelation. Jesus, watch what Jesus does. Jesus says, listen, I, I, hear, I hear fellas, I hear fellas what you all are saying. I really do, uh, Jesus says, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach you a lesson about the difference between manifestation and revelation. Jesus says, here's how I'm going to answer your question. Uh, Jesus says, because uh, if you are careful, you will understand that your problem is that you have confounded revelation with manifestation. And because you haven't been clear on the revelation, you now are questioning the manifestation. Jesus says, so here's what I need you to do. Go back and tell John what you see and what you hear. He says, go tell him what you see that the blind see. Are you in the book? He goes and tells him, tell
tell them that the lame walk tell them that lepers are cleansed tell them that the deaf ears are unstopped tell them that the dead are raised to life again and here's the last thing tell them that the poor have the gospel preached to them what are you saying bishop electate i'm glad you asked on this holy tuesday i need 25 people to jump up on your feet right through here throw your hand up and shout i caught the manifestation because i understand revelation jesus said you ain't got to worry about the manifestation because if you read the revelation it'll tell you what to look for in the manifestation jesus said go tell john what you see and the revelation is found down in isaiah the revelation says on that day the deaf will hear the words of the scroll out of the darkness the blind will see the humble will have joy in their heart because of the word preached to them i gotta take my seat but can i just get somebody to shout go tell it on this holy tuesday is there anybody in the building that can wave their hand and shout you ain't got to do all of that just go tell him what you've seen has he been good to anybody has he made a way for anybody has he opened doors for anybody is there anybody here that can shout go Come on, just touch three, pick two or three people and tell them tonight, you ain't got to have a PhD, you ain't got to have an MD, you ain't got to be the HNRC, you ain't got to know eschatology, you ain't got to know psychology. Look at somebody and tell, just go. If he done anything for you, just go. Look at somebody tell them, you ain't got to tell them, be major, be, 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 or be minor, blah, blah, blah. just go. Somebody shout, I got to tell it. Jesus said, you ain't got to make it up, just go tell them what you see. When I was down, he lifted me up. When I was sick, he healed my body. When I was down to nothing, he was up to nothing. Somebody shout, go tell it. When you look at me all week, I'm going to just go and tell it because he's been just that good to me. Jesus said, go tell John what you see and what you heard. Go and tell it. I got the call. My time is up, but it reminds me, Bishop Elect, of an old lady in the church with a new pastor. A new pastor would be preaching, closing every Sunday, and the old mother would get in the aisle turn her back to the pulpit start looking to the door week one he saw it week two he saw it week three he saw it week four he saw it week five he said i'm gonna go sit mother down because i can't understand when i'm closing done preach the word people celebrate it and she go and turn her back while i'm preaching he pulled her in the office said mother why is it at the end of every sermon after i don't preach people shouting running all over you get in the aisle turn your back toward me and look at the door she said pastor i don't mean no harm but when you get to preaching and closing she said i just start thinking about what God has done for me. Can you just take a moment, turn around towards the door, look back around, and say, I've got 
As you're seated in the presence of the Lord, what a word tonight on Holy Tuesday Symposium. Go tell it. How many of you have been blessed by the word tonight? Hallelujah to God. There may be somebody here in the house or even in the virtual space. And you have heard the telling of the word of God and you need to make a decision tonight. You said, Lord, thank you for healing my body. Thank you for what my eyes have seen, my ears have heard, and my heart has experienced. And you need to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. There are acronyms on the screen right now. You can accept Christ. You can become by Christian experience. You can return to Christ tonight. This is a good night to get back in church. If you've been out of church, you can come by watch care. I'm not from this area. I'm not anywhere from around here. I'm here for school. I'm here for work. Whatever the situation may be, there are churches represented and changing is a good church to watch for your soul. Lady J and I will do it overseers have our back and then we are grateful to God because of the Holy Spirit at salvation he fills us but maybe you're seeking tonight and you say less of me more of him there has to be more all of these ways are on the screen and we want to tell you tonight come on and be a part this a part of this witness there's a telephone number there that you can text to us and it'll begin to talk back to you follow all the prompts or just send us an email it's right there on the screen and we know that something good is going to happen to you and for you tonight as we pray as we pray heads are bowed eyes are closed father in the name of jesus i pray for my brother i pray for my sister even now meet them right where they are as we tell of you god do something for your people tonight call someone to accept you and we'll give you praise for it by the strong name of jesus we pray let the whole church say amen and sounds of change leads us now into the presence of the lord if you're here come on and make the decision come to the altar meet us here is there one tonight I seek you, my brother. Hallelujah. Is there another one tonight? I see you coming, my sister. I see you. Clap your hands. 
so good to have Evangelist Raquel Britton in the house tonight. Evangelist, Evangelist, bless that's my you, cousin. Bless yes. you, cousin. Stretching your hands toward these that have come, all of these precious babies. Father, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus for these that have come to the altar. We pray blessings upon them in the decision that they have made. Meet them right where they are and we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for what you will do in their lives in Jesus' name. Come on, everyone, say amen and amen if you will follow our workers to your your right my left if you follow our workers come on one more time can you clap your hands for these that have come hallelujah what a word tonight can we clap our hands also for the man of god amen amen we're so happy to see what God is doing in our midst. We're changing. Have you been blessed tonight? Hallelujah to God. What a time we have had. I want to again salute our College of Elders, both Overseer Robin Ware and Co-Overseer Elder James Scott. Job well done. Come on and clap. Job well done putting tonight together. We certainly thank God for you and all of our program participants. We are so grateful to God for each and every single one of you. Once again, Resurrection Sunday is on the way. Our overseers will be in the house. It's going to be a time. I want to encourage you if you're in virtual church tonight that you would make your way to the house of the Lord. You don't want to miss this opportunity. Well, we always want to honor God for our founders and our father, mother in the house tonight. Dad, you come and have words. Greet us tonight. I'm just glad. Listen, uh, we're getting ready to catch a flight in a little while to New Orleans because our services symposium there is at 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, so uh, we got to be there early in the morning. So I'll be catching two flights. I've been on a flight right here and getting ready to catch a, another flight. Uh, so this has been amazing, hasn't it? I love all of you. Thank God for you. Sorry we won't be able to shake hands. This is a great time. I know it's family night, uh, but we really got to get to the airport. But Bishop Tate, my God, what a blessing. What a blessing. I tell you, Sister Monica, Elder Brown, I'm telling you, Pastor Turner, I, I, I heard, uh, I heard uh, co-overseer Scott, I tell you, you, you had that deep voice like, like go ahead on, I heard you, well done. Amen. Elder Eugene Brown, bless you, man of God. You took us there tonight, we thank God for you. And y'all make sure you pray for your first lady, first thing in the morning, tomorrow. She'll be opening up our holy symposium at Greater. All right, we're getting ready to go down from this place as we stand all over the house. We give God praise for yet another Holy Tuesday. Let's remember Jesus all week long as we look to the Lord in prayer. Now, Father, we thank you for everything our eyes have seen, ears have heard, and hearts have experienced. We pray blessings upon this congregation as we go home. Give us traveling grace. We thank you that it's been a good night, and we praise you for what will take place over the course of this week. And now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundance above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us all unto him be glory in this church both now and throughout all generations let the people of God say yes and amen God bless you we love you changing drive safely tonight see you on Sunday morning thank you for worshiping with us Pastor Rob, Lady J, Overseers Bishop and Pastor Dean pray you continue to connect with changing as well as share this service with your social media followers and invite your family and friends to connect with us every Tuesday night for Word Explosion at 7.30 p.m. and each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. CAGNOW.ORG We want to remind you of all the ways you can donate and support Changing a Generation. To make a donation by mobile giving, message CAG to 54244 or cash app, dollar sign CAG now or a Givelify app. Click and search for Changing a Generation for Gospel Baptist Church. Use our secured website, cagnow.org, or mail to Changing a Generation for Gospel Baptist Church, 
Post Office Box 360368, Decatur, Georgia 30036. To stay connected for all updates, you can text CAG now to 